Well, well, first of all, I would say it's not my reward, it's my colleagues in Haiti. And we work on a project for ecological sanitation in Haiti. So we're meeting two critical needs, or we're trying to, in Haiti. By providing composting toilets, we're providing sanitation to over 20,000 people. And then on the flip side, we're transforming those wastes into resources, and we're currently producing more than two tons of compost weekly from our composting toilets. And we use that compost for agriculture and reforestation. And it seems a, um, seems a very simple project, but tell us about the effect it had on uh, people's lives then. Uh, I, Haiti is a beautiful country and it's a, it's a joy to get to work there. And I think that when we came in and we were first providing different possible technologies, ecological sanitation quickly emerged as being the most hotly requested one because it, less than 12% of Haitians have access to a toilet. And when they do have access to a toilet, it almost all the toilets either flush underground into unlined pits or directly into rivers or waterways. And so it's one of the reasons that when cholera was first introduced there in 2010, that it quickly turned into the epidemic at the scale that it is, is because there's no access to sanitation. And when people do have a toilet, there's no waste treatment. So on the sanitation front, it's providing critical public health sanitation services. And then on the front of producing more soil that can be used in agriculture and reforestation, it's been especially important, and this is what the Land for Life Award is supporting, is that we're going to now build a sustainable land management center in northern Haiti that will be an educational facility for farmers in the surrounding area to come and partake in agricultural education programs and for us to test the positive impacts of our ecological sanitation-generated compost and for us to invite researchers from around the world to bring best practices for agriculture to Haiti. And I suppose Haiti ticks a number of boxes when you think about countries that are vulnerable to the effects of climate change and desertification. Give us an idea, and you know, I'm sure a lot of people watching will remember there was a bad earthquake there, but give us an idea of some of the other um, vulnerabilities that, that um, are, are sort of fairly obvious in Haiti. I think what's most heartbreaking for me working in Haiti is that uh, any little rainstorm can kill hundreds of people. And we had that when Sandy came by. Sandy really hit New York and it just blew over Haiti, but just the flooding from the tropical storm passing nearby was enough to wipe out whole neighborhoods in the city. And so it's just, it's something that we need more infrastructure and we need more reforestation projects in order for Haiti to recover from what has happened there and to decrease its invulnerability to more such storms in the future. And I guess the sort of Land for Life initiative and your, and your message, is it, um, is part of it at least that um, you can make uh, you can make substantial differences, and it, it doesn't necessarily have to involve huge sums of capital. Yeah, I think that in speaking with the amazing other organizations that were recipients of the Land for Life Award, the Tema Foundation in Turkey and the Eco Schools Project in Uganda, that it's so encouraging to me to hear their work that they're doing, and especially here when we're hearing about failure in climate change negotiations, or we're just hearing, well, oh, we need the government or big policymakers to act. It's really very inspiring to me to see these amazing projects take off on the ground and the, for the UNCCD to take the time to recognize actions that are working. It's been really exciting. And as uh, my co colleague now at the Tema Foundation said, that winning an award like this makes you have a lot more accountability because you go back and people now see you as being someone who has received international recognition for this. And it's now setting, we need to set a national example for how we can improve sustainable land management in Haiti. And so I think my colleagues and I are all fired up to do that. So it's been a really wonderful time to be here.